it's Katie here from the Scrappy Sisters and I am up with another layout for the May I Scrap Lift You uh, month long challenge that Crystal at or month long series that Crystal Barrett from Pineapple Papers is uh, leading and it is her series. She is scrap lifting someone every day for the month of May and she invited whoever would like to join her for that month. Um, and so I have actually decided to scrap lift um, just on Mondays I'm participating. So this scrap lift that I'm doing here is from the wonderful Laura Alberts. She is the queen of um, really simple but effective designs and so this is one of her go-to designs. She just did a video on her channel that I was watching. This video won't go up until um, quite a bit later but she's doing a series on her channel at the moment called go-to designs um, and one of the first ones she talked about was the horizontal, uh, sorry the vertical um, design and so I was going back through her Instagram and I saw this one and I went you know what I really want to recreate that so I am I have of course <laughs> uh, shifted things around a little I am still doing the vertical strip I do have a border now she's doodled a border on hers but I am creating a border with pat, uh, with cardstock uh, so I do have a border um, but I do move my vertical stripe into the middle of my page uh, so everything is kind of housed into the middle of my page with a few little bits hanging over like Laura has done um, but majority is in down the center now I've just pulled out my watercolour palette so I think this one's from American Crafts but I don't remember I actually got it in Kidaholic Kits um, kit many 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 years ago when I was on their design team uh, so yeah it's very old <laughs> um, I don't use it very often I'm not great at watercoloring as you can see this looks like a hot mess um, but don't actually worry because you only see the tiniest bit of it peeking through um, which I knew when I was doing it so I wasn't that worried that it was really looking a bit like uh, a hot mess <laughs> um, so I'm just spritzing water both directly onto my page but also into my watercolour palette and then just picking up the colours in my brush. I'm mainly going for blues and pinks because they are the colours that I have used on this layout. I'm using um, the very, very, very last scraps that I have of the Love Always collection from Coco Vanilla Studio. I still have a bit of it left after this layout, uh, but I have no paper. Um, so I've got a few embellishments left once I finish this layout. But yeah, I use the last of my paper scraps on this. Um, oh, and I'm just using the grey, sorry, to do some splatters. I forgot about that. Because A, grey and pink go really well together. But B, it's also a, a big colour in the Love Actually collection. Now I wanted to leave this part in my video normally this is the kind of thing that I would edit out but I just wanted to show you that when my mixed media background had dried what I actually did was pulled out my laminator this is an A3 laminator and I just ran my 12 by 12 um, background through the laminator to flatten it back out again so it was quite warped I was just using American Crafts textured cardstock uh, it's it's not made for mixed media and I didn't gesso my page beforehand so it, it is it did get quite warped but I found running it through the laminator I actually ran it through twice um, it did help to flatten it out now it was already dry when I did that and I had no dimensional kind of products on my page so I didn't have any you know mousses or texture paste or anything like that so it definitely um, is something to think about if you are going to to give that laminate a trick a try um, I think it works quite well when you you know don't have anything with dimension on your background uh, but yeah, it definitely worked well. Now I have got, I've, I've cut down my 12 by 12 cardstock just slightly because I knew I wanted to border it in black. And then I've got this pink and white stripe here, uh, which I'm going to use to create that vertical line like Laura does in her layout. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just putting a tiny bit of a border around the pink and white stripe. And so I'm going with a black border because that's the same cardstock as I will be using uh, for the full 12 by 12 you know border around my page I am just stressing the edges just for you know add a little bit of texture so I'm going to stick this down and then as I'm sticking my tape down I realize I didn't distress the other edge of this white and black paper and I need to do that before I stick it down so I am also just pulling out the distress tool that I've got which is the Tim Holtz distress tool and just running that along the edge as well and then I'll stick it down, I'll trim it to the size that I want and distress the black, if that makes sense. Just, anyway, it's all in. Everything's in the video. So you can just keep watching. 
So you can see there, I've just matted it and I pull out my trimmer to trim back through um, just to get a nice clean cut. I don't know why I really bother <laughs> because I'm going to distress the edges anyway. So it wasn't the end of the world, but I did run it back through my trimmer. I need to apologize, by the way, I've got a little bit of a cold um, and I keep needing to cough. <laughs> so I keep having to stop my recording. So sorry if it's a bit, bit disjointed, um, but I keep having to stop to have a little sip of water while I'm trying to do these voiceovers. I'm just getting them done now because my son is napping and I'm just trying to whip out these voiceovers while I have a chance. Now, as I said, I'd cut down my white cardstock background just by, I think it was about a quarter of an inch off uh, the top and the bottom, um, just so I have a very small border uh, of black cardstock peeking through. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just lining it up and then I realise I do want to distress the edges again, but because I only distress the two edges of the pink and white and the, the black, um, I only distressed the right and left edges I didn't distress the top and the bottom so I just distressed the right and left edges of the white cardstock as well so the top and the bottom are left plain straight understressed what's the correct term for that <laughs> I'm not sure and I am using wet glue to add my background I find uh, sorry to add my border and I do that because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room so once you've stuck it down with double-sided tape you know you can peel the whole thing back up again but it's a bit of a pain so I find with wet glue just to add my little border around the outside does give me a little bit of extra uh, wiggle room just to kind of move it around and get it positioned correctly now in Laura's video she had some beautiful paper strips or in her layout uh, to create her vertical kind of effect and I chose to recreate that look or sort of you know do my own version of that look by using these little arrows so these are cut file arrows they're actually from uh, Confessions of a Paper Addict cut file I think it's called Be Brave or Be Brave Little One it was a, one of the very very early ones that Virginia did like really really early <laughs> Uh, and I just used the arrow and I repeated it four times. So I didn't use the text part of the cut file for this particular layout. Although I've made a layout, I've made three or four layouts with that cut file. Um, and I just love it. It's one of my faves. I was just looking in my stash for some other paper to back my photos on. So I definitely knew my photos needed something else to help make it pop off the page. So I have backed it in white and then black cardstock, but I knew that it needed something. Sorry, while well, I just have a little drink of water. Um, my throat's got a bit of a tickle in it. So I'm just pulling out these pinks, as you can see here, trying to work out uh, which pinks from my kind of scrap bin or my pink scrap bin will work and then I decided on those two that are pulled out on the right hand side there one's definitely a Maggie Holmes paper but I'm not sure about that top one <clears throat> so I'm just going to mat those up again and then I'm going to put the whole thing together so you can see not trimming I'm a rebel <laughs> just using my scissors Ooh, I am definitely struggling with this voiceover today, guys. Sorry, I have stopped and started it so many times, so hopefully it's not too disjointed. I know I said that earlier in the video already, uh, but I really am stopping and starting and stopping and starting. <laughs> uh, so, as I said, just matting my photos. I know I just said I'm a rebel for not using my trimmer. Uh, but I, look, I do sometimes use it, particularly my little guillotine trimmer, because obviously it cuts much straighter than I can with my naked eye. Uh, but sometimes I'm just a little bit lazy. I'll be honest. Uh, so you can see here, I'm just pulling out some of the embellishments that I have left from this collection. I think there's also a little bit of more than words in here as well. Um, these butterflies are definitely not from love, actually, I don't think. Uh, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. <laughs> uh, but I think they're from more than words, which I had fussy cut out uh, for something else, and they were just left over. So I have five of them. So I'm adding them to each of the arrows, and then I decided to create a little XO with a chipboard on the bottom right of my photo, and I add a little butterfly there as well. And then these thicker words. Look, it's been such a long time. I don't remember if they came with the Love Actually collection from Coco Vanilla or if they were actually thickers, you know, that I got kind of from American Crafts. Um, I don't remember. <clears throat> if anybody else knows, feel free to tell me. <laughs> but I'm deciding to add one of the pink thicker words to each of the arrows uh, just for interest. So that 
kind of effectively becomes my title. Uh, so I'm not doing a title. These thicker words become the title. So I end up with, what have I got? Love, grateful, home and thankful. So they're just all words that relate, obviously, to the picture. The photo is, if you can't tell by the giant two, <laughs> a family photo of the three of us at Lincoln's second birthday. So I don't get that many photos really at all of us as a family. Uh, I take a lot of selfies of Lincoln and I, I take a lot of photos of Lincoln on his own and I take a lot of photos of Danny and Lincoln together. Um, but I don't really take any photos of A, Danny on his own <laughs> and B, uh, me. Uh, not That's not a selfie. And then also of us as an actual you know, a family all together. So yeah, I snapped that or I got my mum to take that photo and I decided to scrapbook it. And I'm super happy with how this turned out. So as you can see, <laughs> I've definitely only used Laura's as inspiration. And I mean, she has a lot of vertical designs I could have chosen and kind of said the same thing that I've used them as inspiration. Uh, but you know, that's okay. That's what a scrap lift is all about, right? <laughs> Taking the bits of the, the person's layout that you're scrap lifting that you love and, you know, putting your own little little touch to it so I'm just these stickers are a little tricky to get off their backing I could have edited this part out in hindsight uh, but I did not apparently I wanted to suffer through a longer voiceover <laughs> so I don't think I edited anything out of the actual putting the layout together part I did obviously edit out some of the the drying time of the mixed media um, and things like that but I didn't edit out the actual kind of putting the layout together and I meant to add you can see what I mean when I said you can only see the tiniest, tiniest little hint of that mixed media peeking through. So I just wanted a really subtle sort of wash of colour coming out from behind that vertical strip. And it really has worked well, in my opinion. Um, certainly in real life, it, I don't know if it picks it up that well on camera. But in real life, you can definitely see the little soft touches of pink and blue just peeking out of the sides of the pattern paper um, and it's a really cute effect I think and I think the color matched quite well I was a little worried when I was doing it that the color was going to be a little off um, and it's not perfect but it's pretty good so I'm just adding a little butterfly to each of the arrows as well as a little XO XO and the thing I liked about popping the XO the XO there I know it didn't really need it um, it didn't kind of need an extra cluster but I don't, you know, we all have our own insecurities and I don't love photos of myself, you know, it's, it's, yeah, when I have no control over what I look like, you know, when you're taking a selfie, you can really kind of get a good angle and, and, you know, make sure you're sort of presenting yourself in, in a way that you feel confident and, and happy uh, but when obviously somebody else is taking a photo of you, you don't get that luxury so I uh, covered the part of my body that I don't like the most which is my tummy <laughs> so you know there's a twofold reason for putting the little XO XO there now I had some little enamel dots so I just added those to each cluster I did think about just adding the rest I've only got one two three four I've only got six left but I thought that might be a bit of overkill <laughs> Um, I've already added five clusters of enamel dots to go with the sort of five different clustery areas there. So, you know, I didn't think I could squeeze any more onto the page. Um, and now I'm coming in with some splatters because I always splatter. So I, I know I did some grey <coughs> watercolour in the background um, splatters, but I decided to come in with some Heidi Swap Colour Shine in blush. I'm pretty sure it's blush. Yeah. Now this is like a matte... Uh, at least it looks pretty matte on my page oh actually I take that back there is a tiny amount of shimmer in it but it's not as shimmery I find as the navy sorry I'll take a little sip of water again so I do add some blush I find it not as easy to splatter either but that's just me and then I also came in with the Heidi Swap Color Shine in pink and then we are all finished. So thank you so much for watching. Please go and check out all of Laura's details in the description box down below. Here's the close-up. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.